Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums. This is No Man's Sky News, and I'm at my news desk up in the old station. Now, people, we're doing pretty darn good against the alien scourge. Yeah, up on the screen right now, I put up the stats of how well we're all doing against this menace. Yes, thanks to that bomber boy. If you're not following that bomber boy over on the old Twitter space, please do. He's freaking awesome. Thank you, that bomber boy, for those lovely super duper stats, which that means we've now hit tier three. So, you know what? Let's jump on over to Captain Steve in game and let's see what that means. Hopefully, it means we're getting the actual Titan y type legs for our Minotaur. Let's jump on over. Let's take a look see, shall we, people? Well, how do that jump? Tis I, Captain of the Steve. And you can see here, I'm in my Crichton get up. And we can go over to the expedition. And over on phase three, we can claim the actual reward. For the optional milestone to claim the liquidator leg plant. Claim the Kated. Thank yes. There we are. New technology. Lovely jubbly. We can head on over to Johnny5 to collect a code those legs. Now, as you know, if you claim this inside of your expedition save and jump back to your other save, there seems to be a little bit of squiffiness in the way that you can't claim them. But hopefully, once the expedition ends, hopefully that will be rectified and hopefully we'll be able to claim them. It says here that it's already owned, which is exactly what's happening when you come out of the expedition. So there we go. We already own them. We can go and customise our legs of our exomech. I'll see you down at the planet. I'm still doing my part against these little demons. Thank you. Take that, you. Yeah. You're on fire. Hopefully he's going to perish. Take that. Ow. Boy, you sneaking up behind me. I see you. Little scutters. Oh, my days. What the fudge is that thing? Anyway, I, I get easily distracted even while I'm doing my morning murdication for the liquidators. I guess. Take that. Don't worry. I will be bringing out my exomech in the moment. I'm just clearing the area. Now, there is a reason why I'm doing this. It's because we have to hit a, a minimum criteria. So whenever these little guys pop out and start attacking you, make sure you do your part. Because here we go, here's the Liquidator's Milestone 4. You can see here we're now at 16% already. And when it comes to taking out these evils, they're yeah, biological horrors, they definitely count. And you can see there that I've done my minimum criteria down in the bottom right corner of that corner there of 200 kills like yes lovely jubbly anyway let's see if we can bring on out our exo mech Chapow. bring it on in you can see there i've already fitted the new arm to its side oh you well you you could if it didn't just start walking off when i tried to take a look at it well, there you go. Look at that lovely arm. Now let's put on the legs and see how that looks. So we go into here, Exocraft, and let's put in the legs. I wonder whether it's going to give it anything awesome. An upgrade to the Minotaur's heavy Exocraft hybrid liquidators is cutting edge heavy duty combat unit designed to operate in the harshest of environments. Install it would significantly improve the Minotaur's engine and mobility systems. Okay, ah, oh, great. We're going to need a quad servo to get that in to see the actual effects. So I'm going to have to go and hunt down and kill myself. Okay, so I managed to break into a manufacturing facility. I've taken out a Sentinel dog. So now I should be able to upgrade my Exo Mech. So here we go, Exo Mech. And we should be able to stick that in there. Chicka boom! And its legs now look awesome. I say it looks awesome. It does look pretty quite good. It looks like something out of Pat Labor, doesn't it? The old manga anime. Pretty darn freaking lovely so far. So good. So there we go, people. Done diddly and done. And community research milestone free completed, which we know because we claimed that ages ago. That was a bit delayed, wasn't it? Delayed and somewhat. Anyway, back to Captain Steve over in the studio. Well, charms, sir. Uh... That's pretty darn awesome stuff, isn't it? Now, as well as that, as well as getting these Titan legs, I've got some more sort of news for you. I'd say news for better put that down. Sorry, I was having a little bit of a sip of that during that interlude. But anyways, 
I have done a poll over on my community space to ask people out there inside of the verse what they would like to see most in Worlds Part 2 when it comes to new worlds. New biomes, things like that. So on screen right now, you can probably see a lovely poll that's sort of superimposed over me and is slightly see-through. Yes! You can see there that quite a lot of people, the majority, would like to see a void and glass planets come into iteration, like those described in the lore. Now these places, the realm of glass, is said to be such a beautiful place, but dangerous place, to the point where there's shards of glass that can cut you and you won't even know and you can bleed out. Now we have been given these dissonant systems covered in purple crystals. I would just imagine it's a, another variant of that with even more purpley crystals going on. And maybe sort of when you go into caves, maybe they're all crystally as well and all that sort of shenanigans. Could be pretty awesome, especially since we know now that Hello Game has done wonders with glass effects and reflections and all that sort of lovely stuff. It could be in an amazingly beautiful place. Void planets, however, I think would be more organic, a little bit like the infested planets that we see now in our current iteration. Apart from everything will be infested. Normally we have like infested lushes or an infested sort of desert planet, an infested biome, roughly. But this would be proper just infested planet. Completely organic, you know? So times 10 of what we see now, roughly, is what I'm thinking. So hopefully, that I mean, that's where people have hit the majority. Now, an interesting one in this list that I haven't mentioned before all that much is gas giants. Yes, I've mentioned them, but I haven't gone to town on them. And the way that I think that gas giants could work is it's not necessarily a planet that you land on, or if you do, it's not going to be for very long. Gas giants do usually have a, some sort of solid centre, but it's usually that hot and that under pressure that if you did land on it, it's going to be like landing on the surface of the sun. You know, yes, you might be able to cool down this new exomech. You know, that one has got awesome hazard protection. Maybe we're going to need this exomech to land on something like that. More hazardous welds. But anyway, what I'm thinking is as you fly in to a gas giant, maybe your gas collectors, a new bit of technology that you install, or if you're in a living ship, maybe you some lungs, start breathing in and taking in sort of like the gases of the planet and maybe you might get the radion gas or some other gas a little bit like you know the the interstellar harvesters that we have on our freighters you just start gathering gases automatically but the deeper you go and the higher the pressure gets those gases sort of become a solid and as you're flying through the atmosphere you're going to see storms happening well winds lightning they've got all these storm effects now they've got all the wind effects now they've got all the volumetric effects for the clouds so as you're flying through the cloud layers get deeper and deeper and deeper and as you fly in, so does the hazards that your ship is coming under. So you've got to do up your shields and all that sort of stuff. But the deeper you go, the better the resources you get. So you first start getting those gases. But then the next layer, as you enter into, say, like the thicker cloud layer, you start getting perhaps tritium and you get pyrite, things that you can use to actually fuel your ship with. Because it's a pain in the neck having to shoot asteroids, let's face it. I'd rather fly into a gas giant. That'd be fun. And then as you fly through that layer and you hit the storm layer where you're seeing all the lightning or tornadoes, things like that, perhaps then you're going to get storm crystals and things, you know. And then the deeper the layers you go, the more interesting sort of stuff you get. And if you are actually managing to land on one of these things, heaven freaking forbid, and you jump out and call your exomech, Perhaps you can manage to harvest a few really precious materials, but you've then got to think of, I've got to get off this planet. I've got to get back out of here. So you're going to time it just right to get as much as you can to get these high precious materials, jump back in your ship and fly off as quickly as you can, you know? So I think maybe gas giants could come in. I mean, after the storm layer, we've got all these new volumetrics on planets like dust storms, bubble storms, all sorts of stuff, gravitational storms. They can get all those volumetrics and put them together and make them larger. I think they've got everything they need now to make gas giants happen and make gas giants possible. Anyway, that one scored fairly low on the list. The next highest one was underwater biomes and deeper planets. Yeah, I'll get to that in a moment. Just going to have a, dip, a little sip of that. I've got a dry mouth. So we have been given the technology now to land on water. So I'm wondering whether there might be full-on water planets. 
no land at all. So you just have to land on the surface of the water. It'd be quite cool if they had floating islands with waterfalls dripping down into the oceans. That'd be freaking nice. But yeah, water planets, predominantly water planets that you land on the surface of the water, dive on in, much deeper oceans, and the deeper into the ocean you go, the better the hazard protection you need, the more underwater breathing apparatus you're going to need. Perhaps there's not as many kelp sacks, but the deeper you dive, again, the same sort of premise, the better the sorts of things you're going to get. Now, the reason why I think these new purple systems might spawn in these new worlds is because when you look at the actual resources required for these purple systems, you need idiom, so you're probably going to need an idiom drive to go and get the idiom in the first place. So I think these purple systems are going to be very much end game. It's kind of obvious that they're going to be because the ingredients to make the engine to take you to the purple systems, you need idiom. You also need the uh, the, the, the solary mirrory type things. Those uh, I don't know what they're called actually. The, the sentinel mirrors. You've got to kill those harvesters on the planets that give you those inverted mirror thingies or whatever they're called. And you also need Atlantium. So these three things you get fairly late game. So I think the purple systems are going to bring new challenges when it comes to exploration and also combat. So I'm thinking that we're going to need better hazard protection, better technologies to go to these systems. Hence why we're building this awesome exomech right now. I, I'm fairly sure that every planet is going to be that hazardous that going on the planet without the exomech is going to be something you're like, I, I don't want to do that. I'm going to melt. I think the Exomech is going to play a bigger part in these new systems, hence why everybody, even those that haven't run the community mission, if they've got enough Quicksilver, can buy the parts to make their Exomech. And that's also why I think at the moment there's a bit of a bug where if I jump back into my legacy save now, my original save, rather than being my expedition save, and try to claim it, it says already owned and you can't. I think that needs to be rectified and rectified by the end of this expedition. Fingers crossed that's on the actual cue card for Hello Games to do. Anyway, so you've got a little bit of news here new exomech legs and you've had a little bit of speculation around the different worlds that i hope to see in worlds part two i hopefully that's wet your whistle if it has if you've liked this video please hit a, a like and a subscribe you know, this little guy just asked you to do a like as well so hopefully you're listening to him or me one or the other but smash that like hit that subscribe and i'll see you next time hopefully you've liked this format too bye bye